Channel Islands National Park is only about 60 miles away from Los Angeles, yet it remains one of the least visited national parks in the United States. In fact, the visitor center isn't even in the park. Now, why is it like this? Well, it can be intimidating to visit. There's boat schedules, there's permits. Each island kind of has its own deal. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the easy way to visit the Channel Islands. In this simple two-day itinerary, we're gonna have kind of the easiest boat schedules, the easiest permits to get. We're gonna do some hikes. We're gonna camp overnight in a campground that's close to the boat so you don't have to carry things far. There's gonna be water, there's gonna be bathrooms. It's really the best way to visit the Channel Islands for the first time and really get a flavor for them. Now, as I go through this video, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments on YouTube. I'll do my best to answer them. I also have a corresponding guide on my website where I have all the links and I have all this printed out so you can kind of peruse it at your will. Just search for the Hiking Guide Channel Island Santa Cruz and you should be able to find it or just go to hikingguide.com. And if you find the video helpful, you can say thank you by giving me the old thumbs up. There are technically eight Channel Islands. The National Park encompasses the top five islands. And we're gonna to go to the biggest island, Santa Cruz, specifically to Scorpion Cove, which was one of the easiest spots to reach on the island. To plan this trip, there are only two easy things to do. First, book the campsite and then book your boat ticket. We're gonna be booking the Scorpion campsite, which is only about a 15 minute walk from the ferry landing. There's an upper and lower loop. I prefer the upper loop, specifically sites 24 and 25, which I think offer the most solitude. The campsite opens up on a rolling six month basis, so you can book a campsite for six months from today on today. Usually there's plenty of spots if you do it six months out, but if you can't find a spot, try the website Outdoor Status, which will check for canceled permits. One of the nice things about the temperate climate of the Channel Islands is that you can pretty much visit any time of the year and it'll be nice out. Between December and March, there's a chance for storms, in which case the boats might get canceled. I like to visit in spring when the wildflower's out and it's nice and green. Once you've got your campsite, then you just need to get your ferry tickets. Island Packers is the company that runs the ferry and you can just go to their website, look for the Santa Cruz page, and you're gonna to wanna to get a ferry out in the morning. And we're gonna stay there that day overnight and then you wanna get a ferry back later in the day, the next day. And it's as simple as that. You've got your campsite and you've got your boat tickets and you're all ready to go. Your journey starts at Ventura Harbor at the Island Packers office. I'd say get coffee and breakfast before you get here. The stores aren't usually open early. Island Packers will send you an email on when you should arrive, where you should park and all that good stuff. The one thing to know is that if you have any fuel canisters for your camping stove, you're gonna have to check those in before you get on the boat. And then go ahead and wait online. The boats are usually pretty crowded, but you should be able to find a seat on board. The boats aren't that big, and if you suffer from seasickness, you're probably gonna to wanna to bring some Dramamine with you. If it's really rough, they cancel the boats though. The boat ride across takes about an hour, but it can be longer if the weather is bad. There are refreshments on board. You can pick up beers or sodas, and sometimes you can see dolphins on the way. It's kind of neat, but eventually you will get to Scorpion Cove, and there's a pier here that they kind of hype up as being dangerous, but it's not too bad. The boat will just pull up. You walk off and then collect your fuel and your backpack. You'll also see day hikers here, and if you can't do an overnight, that's an option. Just take the early boat over, do one of the hikes I show you, and then take the afternoon boat back. There's a mandatory introduction that you do on the pier with a park ranger. He'll tell you about your stay on the islands and also answer any questions you might have. It's actually very interesting, so I recommend you pay attention. From the ferry, you're gonna head straight back through the old Scorpion Ranch remnants. Now, this was a ranch dating back to the 1880s, and the Park Service bought it in 1997, but obviously, the ranch was here for a long time and they had to be pretty self-sufficient, kind of interesting looking around. There's also some cool interpretive displays to check out here, so check those out. And just gonna keep going straight back until you reach the old ranch building here. And this is also a small visitor center. And inside there's some good interpretive displays and there's also a guest book and a National Parks passport stamp if you have one of those cool little books. From the visitor center, you're gonna make the left towards the campgrounds, and they're well marked with signs here. And the first, you're gonna pass the lower campground if you're staying here, and then you're here. But otherwise, you're gonna keep going to the upper campground loop. And if you look, there's these little markers by each campsite. They're pretty easy to find. When you find your tent site, you'll notice there is a box there. That is a fox box. You have to put all of your food and scented items in there to protect them from the island fox, which is 
the fox that's only found on six of the eight Channel Islands. And each island has its own subspecies of fox. They're about a third the size of the gray fox that you'd find on the mainland. They used to be endangered, but not anymore. And uh, obviously don't feed them, use the box that keeps everybody healthy and happy. Both campsite loops have bathrooms and the bathrooms are really nice inside. There's toilet paper, all the stuff that you need to do your business. And there's also water at both the campsites. So you don't have to lug a bunch of water with you. When you come here, just fill up when you get to the campsite and you'll be all good. It can get pretty windy at the campsite, so you're going to make sure that your tent is tied down and staked out properly. In terms of gear, you really don't need anything special for the islands, you know, just a normal sleeping pad, quilt or sleeping bag, tent. You can't buy anything on the island, so make sure you just bring everything with you. Obviously, you're going to need a stove, some food, and of course, you don't want to forget your headlamp. Remember that you're in the middle of the ocean, so having a rain shell or a puffer jacket will help. It does get a little bit cool at night, so just prepare accordingly. Once you've settled in, we're going to do the first hike to Smuggler's Cove, and it leaves right from the campground. We're going to go up the Scorpion Canyon Loop Trail for part of it, which is a really beautiful single track trail up uh, Scorpion Canyon. Makes sense. Then eventually we're going to connect with Smuggler's Road, which will take us all the way downhill to Smuggler's Cove, which is a secluded little beach. The hike starts up a mellow single track up the left side of Scorpion Canyon. Really beautiful rock formations on the other side as you hike up here. And after a little bit, there's a pretty minor junction here. It's well signed, as you can see. Uh, we're going to go up to the left to continue up to Smuggler's Road. But if you were to go straight here, you can go into Scorpion Canyon. There's not a trail up in there, but you can explore. We're going to go left and start going uphill here. It's a little bit of an uphill, a little steep in sections, uh, but not too long overall. And as you climb up, you can look down to the left and see down into the campgrounds, maybe even see your tent. And look at this, how beautiful this is from the wind and the grass and the island. I was just mesmerized by this as I was climbing. So cool. And this island is actually uh, over a fault line. I don't know if this is part of the fault line or just erosion. If you know anything, let me know, but it looks pretty cool. Now we're gonna keep climbing up. You can see it's rocky here. Generally, the trail is pretty mellow. It's not too rocky, but we do have sections like this as we climb up. And eventually, once you gain uh, the upper parts of Scorpion Loop, you'll be able to look out to the left and start to see the Pacific Ocean and over to the mainland once again. When we come up to this big junction up ahead is uh, Montagnon Ridge, where you can go if you hike straight up there. But we're going to make the left-hand turn and go over to a Smuggler's Road. It's Smuggler's Road. You might see some old equipment laying around. There used to be an oil uh, derrick here, I think in the 1950s, but the Park Service uh, announced that they're going to be taking it down and plugging in the holes. So hopefully it'll be gone when you're there, but that's what it is if you see it. After a short while on this little connector trail here, we're going to come out to Smuggler's Road. Again, nice, nicely signed here. It is a national park, so you'd expect that, but it's very well done. We have about two miles uh, to Smuggler's Cove here on Smuggler's Road, which is easy to follow. It's an old road. You'll be able to get nice views of Anacapa Island to the distance. That's the western island that's uh, closed to humans, only open to birds. And we're going to go downhill for a little bit. You'll be able to see the trail wind in front of you. That sailboat down there, that's the cove. That's where we're going to go eventually. And don't forget to look around. There might be some island foxes around. This one was watching us go down. Here's another sign. There are some little split offs and other, other roads here. These are the old ranching roads. But if you just stay on the main road, uh, you should be fine. Just stay on the, the main one going down here. And eventually you will get down to a Smuggler's Cove, which is a secluded little beach. There's picnic tables behind here. There is a toilet. You can see there's a sailboat there. Um, people who visit the park on sailboats, this could be a place where they come into the park. So there is a park uh, sign here designating the area, Smuggler's Cove. And up above are some uh, eucalyptus trees planted in the 1880s for the local inhabitants. From there, just return to the campground and enjoy your first night. And just remember that when you have trash from food, you have to put that in the fox box. And the island is entirely pack in, pack out. So you're going to need to carry your trash back out with you.
The next day, once you're done at your campsite, pack your stuff up, go down to the ferry landing and put your backpacking gear in these fox boxes, which are meant for you to store your gear while you enjoy the islands. Just take a little day pack and some water for the next hike, which starts here as well. The next hike is just over five miles to Potato Harbor Overlook. It's a really nice seaside hike that goes up along the bluff. So we're going to start from the visitor center Hop on the Cavern Point Loop, pay a visit to the Cavern Point, then continue along the bluffs on the North Bluff Trail. Eventually the trail will join up with Potato Harbor Road, and eventually we're going to reach the Potato Harbor Overlook. You can't go down there, but you can look at it from the top, and it is breathtaking. It looks like a postcard. We're going to enjoy the views, then head back the way we came. The hike starts at the Visitor Center, just a minute from where we dropped our luggage off, our backpacks. And you can see it's well marked here. We're going to be taking the Cavern Point Loop. And in the beginning, we're going to have to do a little bit of a pill just to kind of gain the bluffs. It looks a lot worse than it is. And man, look at the scenery here. All the flowers are in bloom. It's really just a beautiful place. And uh, even going up these hills is not that big of a deal when the scenery is so beautiful. And once we come up here, you can see into uh, Scorpion Cove. That's where we came in. And then these incredible ocean views that will follow us for the whole hike will start to appear as we get up on the bluffs here. A lot of the trails like this, just right along the side. Those mountains on the other side of the channel, that's Los Padres National Forest. The mountains are usually covered in snow in the winter, not always. And we're just going to continue along. There are some sections where we go a little bit away from the bluffs, but we're going to come to this big intersection here. We're going to make the quick right-hand turn, a little spur trail, I think about 80 yards off to the right to visit Cavern Point, which is a little point out in the ocean. The cavern's underneath it. I'll show you how we can see the side of it in a second or two, but we're just going to follow this little trail out past this uh, rocky soil here. There's a little stone marking the point, and it's really just a nice panoramic view. Look at the snow-capped mountains and the clouds in the distance. There's a little marker for Cavern Point, and we're just going to come up here and enjoy the views, uh, which are obviously rather panoramic. We can see across, you can see down, uh, sometimes you can see some seals and sea lions on the rocks, but just a really cool place with some great views. Once you're done at Cavern Point, just go back to that intersection. We're going to be making the right. We're going to be making the right-hand turn here, and you can see the trail heading off there, continuing up along the bluffs. We're going to avoid this turn off to the left, a uh, little service road, service area. We're going to continue on the Cavern Point Loop Trail. And as we continue, I want you to look back. You're going to get a nice view of Cavern Point. You can see some of the caverns underneath the point that it's named after. And you can find those caverns along the whole hike, not just here. Obviously, the flowers are in bloom. It's the spring. Really, really uh, nice here as we continue down to this narrow point. It looks a little sketchy. It's not so bad, but the views, again, I live in Southern California, and uh, I live on the ocean. The views from here are just at another level. But we're going to continue down here to our next little trail junction. And obviously, be careful uh, when you're near the cliffs. Don't go too close. Uh, you don't want to get into trouble there. But we're going to continue down along until we get to the next junction, where we're going to leave the Cavern Loop Trail behind. Here you can see we climb up another well-marked trail. We're going to go right on the North Bluff Trail towards Potato Harbor Overlook. Back on a single track, a little bit of an uphill, but again, this is, I think there's about 600 feet of total climbing here. Once we're up on the bluffs, it'll be the same as it was before, but, uh, you know, a little bit less traffic because the Cavern Point Loop can be a little popular, but there's never, never a whole lot of people here. When we get to this junction, we get down to Potato Harbor Road, and we're going to continue straight on the last stretch here on Potato Harbor Road until we get uh, to the Overlook. And here we are. This is not the Overlook. It's, a, it's marked with a sign. There's definitely views from here, but don't get fooled. The Overlook is just kind of one little cove over, but the views here are obviously worth checking out. We're just going to continue a short ways down to the Potato Harbor Overlook. It's called Potato Harbor because it's in the shape of a potato, but it, again, it's a like it looks like a postcard, right? You can look down through the crystal clear waters 
All of the waters that surround the Channel Islands National Park are part of the Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary, which was formed in 1980, it protects over 2,000 species of marine life, including uh, endangered whales and other endangered species, and uh, has extensive kelp forests here, which are thriving ecosystems. There's also some great views of the rest of Santa Cruz Island. It's actually the largest island off the west coast of the United States. It's about four times the size of Manhattan. From here, just hike back to the visitor center and hop on the ferry home, and that is your perfect two days in the Channel Islands. That's it. Again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And if you want to visit the Channel Islands, but you can't make this happen, you can also visit Catalina Island. Catalina Island isn't part of the National Park, but it is a Channel Island and there are good uh, backpacking opportunities and visiting opportunities there. I'll put a playlist up on the screen that gives you some options if you want to try that out as well.